for Cal United, zero, Steven Barrera. And right now with the public address announcer going over the starting lineups, Michael Bryan. We're, gonna have to, we're definitely getting fir our first look at what Jordan players will be on the field tonight. Number six, Stuart Capriotti. Starting defense, number seven, Adan Coronado. So we're looking at that starting lineup right now. Or, I mean, look at that goalkeeper, Steven Barrera. He's going to be big time for Cal United. He, was, he already came up with some pretty big time saves the last game. Abraham Bihon is back on the pitch as well. So he's going to be a big time help for Cal United. I mean, we have Chris Clutie leading the team in that one. And you mentioned Abraham Bihon. Definitely a very talented midfielder with plenty of speed, plenty of pace. And if he's played before for Oklahoma City Energy at the USL level, and he's also been capped for the United States at the U18 level. So definitely a lot of experience brought to the pitch from Abraham Villon. And Abraham Villon, the last time, he, he actually received that MVP honors back when he was playing with the you know, UPSL when Cal United was back, back in the day, you know, once upon a time. But... This is going to be a very interesting game, I'm going to say. I mean, that lineup for Cal United is going to be a great one. Hey but now. it's not going to be a cakewalk tonight. I mean, hey LA Force, the, you can definitely say that the coaching staff is definitely remembering the last game 3 to nothing. Cal United's coming in, and they're definitely going to remember that game. And with the LA Force taking a look at their starting lineup, not a change with the goalkeeper position as well. That's something that the LA Force have got to be happy about. Miguel Marin, plenty of experience with this organization, whether it's been with FC Golden State at the NPSL level or with FC Golden State Force within in USL League Two. And I think the players you really got to keep an eye on tonight for LA Force will be on the wings, Alvaro Madrigal and Ricardo Ruiz. Those are going to be big time players for LA Force. You got got to take advantage of the counterattacks you know it is a bit of a cooler night tonight or I mean so we're not gonna have to worry about heat we're gonna worry about hey you know what we're gonna go out guns blazing we're gonna go out and we're gonna attack you guys early on if you're LA Force that's the same thing you're making against Cal United tonight you want to take advantage of any mistakes that Cal United makes tonight whether it's just one misplayed pass whatever whatever it may be a misplayed cross and you guys got to feed off of each off of each other's energy and you know what art we're not talking about the elephant that's in the room right now this is a very important game for for both LA for LA Force along with Cal United remember if Cal United wins or even results in a tied game today they're in it they're in the championship game whereas LA Force it's either win or you're going home you're staying here in Rio Hondo well, one thing with LA Force is they'll be shooting for that victory but it will be tough but actually for LA Force if they do get that victory that will actually clinch them a spot in the West Coast Championship and now we will need to wait now we have to of course stand and observe the national anthem Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose brush lights and bright stars through the We are just 
probably about a minute away from kickoff. First going over the starting lineups. When looking at when looking at the formation that we expect to see with the LA Force, like we earlier mentioned, Miguel Marino will be in goal. The center backs, Giovanni Vasquez and captain Alex Colwell. The outside backs, Mark Tanko and Daniel Amo. Plenty of speed from the wing backs. As for the center midfielders, Ever De La Torre, Manny Guzman, and Leo Dos Anjos. The wingers on the outside, Ricardo Ruiz and Alvaro Madrigal. Playing up top, Marvin Merlano from Colombia has two goals on the season so far. And like I said earlier, LA Force has only scored four goals this season. But Marvin Merlano, I mean, is he the player that Cal United really needs to watch out for? This is going to be a big time player, and you know what, the Force, they're going to, you could definitely say that they're going to play more defensive, just like I keep saying before, that last game is going to keep sticking out to them, and this is a must-win game. You have the home crowd here supporting you, LA Force, you have the fans here to cheer for you, you got them, and you know what, they're here to support you. They're here to support you, and they want to try to squeeze in a spot in that championship game, and they want to travel to wherever they need to travel to. So. I believe LA Force is going to take care of business tonight, but it's not going to be easy. And you know what? Both of these teams, it's going to be like a clash of the Titans, our clash of the Titans right here. Expect these two, and it's going to be a bloodbath. I'm calling it already. All right, and when you talk about bloodbaths, you're mentioning rivalries as well. Los Angeles against Orange County. you got to like the matchup here. When taking a look at Cal United's starting lineup, not many changes. Barrera still in goal. You got Salguero and Cludi as the wing backs. Aiden Coronado and Xavier Forte as the center backs. The defensive midfielders, Michael Bryan and Duncan Capriati. As for the attacking midfielders, Kevin Gian, Gustavo Villalobos on the wings, Abraham Villon playing in the center, and up top, Christian Tierjung. So what do you make of this starting lineup for Cal United? Because you've spent a lot of time covering and doing play-by-play -play with Cal United Strikers FC. Art, I really like the lineup that Cal United is bringing here to Rio Hondo tonight. Uh, I really believe this is this is a very solid lineup that's here on the pitch tonight. It's great to see uh, Gian back on the pitch along with Abraham Bion. And the last game that they played against, against 1904, not exactly everybody was there as far as starters are concerned. I mean, you still have the veteran Chris Clutie there on the pitch as well. Tier Jung didn't even get the start last game, but uh, you know what? Tier Jung, he's back on the pitch. And you know what? If you're LA Force, you're going to play the full 90 tonight because if you don't play the first five minutes, Tier Jung is going to attack you. And Tier Jung, he is the type of player that will attack you in the first three to five minutes. And we are underway. And you mentioned Christian Tier Jung, already five goals on the season. Plenty of firepower from Cal United strikers. We're in for an entertaining match tonight. Like you said, you said it's going to be a bloodbath. It's going to be a battle. And this is what makes soccer so exciting. It's rivalries. Of course, local derbies, if you want to go ahead and call it that. I mean, like we said, Los Angeles against Orange County, and here we go. And playing at the left back position, that's Gonzalo Salguero. Headed away. Capriotti had it for a moment. Gets it to his other defensive midfielder, Michael Bryant. Sent up the field, looking for a streaking Kevin Gian. And Colwell playing it safe, heading it back to his keeper, Miguel Marin. Cold night tonight for soccer. Uh, you definitely expect these two to just go, come out guns blazing. They're not going to have to sit, worry about, oh, let's uh, preserve our energy tonight. But I'm um, just expecting these two to blow up and just expect and wait for the right counterattack. And sent back the other way already, Coronado and Fuerte. The center backs for Cal United a little busy. Can't be surprised by how this game has started. I definitely wouldn't be surprised to see LA Force pressing a little bit early on to try and take advantage of any possible mistakes from Cal United, but definitely looking to see, uh, definitely expecting to see Cal United settle this one down by controlling the ball with plenty of movement and plenty of possession. Now to the outside, Salguero, excellent patience, switching the field, he's looking for Gustavo Villalobos. Now it's Manny Guzman, can the LA Force get something going? And Madrigal had it for a moment, was looking for Ricardo Ruiz, but gets all the way to, after a deflection, gets to Leo Dos Anjos of Brazil. He was unable to keep possession, but now he gets it back. So right now we have both teams kind of not really able to establish that full-on control right now early on. 
It's going to be a slow development of game right now. You're just seeing that these two teams just really just trying to get a feel for the game, still trying to get that first shot off. I mean, you're just looking at the ball movement, just even trying to establish the little things as to ball movement right now. And now Salguero taking the pass from Duncan Capriati. And Salguero not in the mood to take any risks, plays it back to Barrera. Now it's Fuerte once again to Aiden Coronado. And Coronado with a good ball to Michael Bryant. Bryant feeling the pressure, and that one given away. That one going straight to Dos Angeles. Looks like he's pairing up with Manny Guzman at defensive midfield. Now playing all the way to the left back, that's Daniel Amo. And Daniel Amo looking for an option. Had Guzman for a moment. Now Madrigal will hear his name plenty of times, actually loses that one to Chris Cludi. Now it's Capriati. Still Capriati gets a good ball to Vion. Now to the outsides, Villalobos, the danger man for Cal United Strikers. That's a good ball, passed in, a shot going just wide. I even think some of the LA Force players were expecting the flag to come up, but it did not. And there you go. It just took that, it just takes one shot to at least get it out of your system. You know, you're coming in, it's the pregame jitters, you know. You are you got to get that first one off. I mean, not entirely a bad shot there by Cal United, but at least you have that one shot off. And that was Kevin Gian, came close, shot one just a little wide, but already the opportunity is coming from, for Cal United strikers. We'll have to see if there'll be any quick adjustments from the LA Force, but back the other way. Looking for Ricardo Ruiz on the right wing, headed away by Salguero. Now Gian almost had Villon, but instead gets it to Christian Tiryong. Now Tiryong looking for an option. He's got Villon. Villon still has it. Salguero pushing up, trying to get it to Gian. Cleared out momentarily. For a moment, I thought we were going to see a foul. That was Merlano, who definitely received some contact from Coronado. Referee says play on. And I got to like that call, not trying to slow the game down. Now to the other side of the field, it's Ricardo Ruiz with plenty of space. Sending a left foot across in, and that one came, came close to being some trouble. Merlano was unable to get, get the handle on it, but you gotta like the play from Ricardo Ruiz on the right wing. That's a beautiful development of plays right there. Look, there's the cross right there, and he just missed it by a hair right there. Real quickly, would have been LA Force on top, a one to nothing, and it's just that one need of at least to get that goal and to at least get the lead against Cal United and put the pressure on them. So only entering the sixth minute, each team so far has had a pretty decent chance to take the lead. You gotta like what we're seeing so far. Now Chris Cludy trying to get something going. A Little bit of traffic over there. I really feel like the referee, well there it is, there is the whistle. You have the LA Force players not happy with the call, but it will be a free kick for Cal United. And there you go, I mean, LA Force, that was a great first shot by them. They, I mean, they're already looking good early on in this one. Now, now you're going back to, you gotta play defense, you gotta put a stop here against uh, Cal United. We've seen them get some excellent goals, I mean, some brilliant goals on these free kicks. So. Make sure you got to play that the solid defense inside of the 18-yard box. And the left back, Gonzalo Salguero, to be taking this one. He's going to try and put this one in no man's land. Takes a bounce. Tiryong had it for a moment. And looks like it was cleared out of bounds from here. Yes, it actually will be a corner kick. And that one was cleared out by Daniel Amo. So the first corner kick of the night goes to Cal United Strikers FC. And once again, it will be Gonzalo Salguero. I think in a situation like this, look for Christian Tiryong, maybe Kevin Gian. I would even say Chris Cludi. Dangerous in the air. Here it comes. There is a touch, but it did go out of bounds. Will be a goal kick for LA Force. So not a bad chance off the corner kick. But we are seeing Cal United provide some pressure. I think it's going to be a back and forth game the way this is going so far after only, after nearly seven minutes. Expect it to be a very back and forth game right now. I mean, you're going to see, you're just trying to see who's going to blink first in this one. It's just going to be a staring contest between the two right now. It seems like nobody's really blinking just yet, but expect, expect it to be a high scoring game at least. And Abraham Vion 
with a good opportunity. You gotta like the defensive play from Colwell as well for the LA Force. So Salguero playing it back to Fuerte. Now Chris Cludy. Seems like we always hear his name a lot. Very experienced player who's played for the Colorado Rapids before. Definitely a lot of talent on this Cal United squad. Now trying to get it towards Kevin Gian. That was Coronado, but headed away by Mark Tanko. Switching the field to Daniel Almo. Let's see if the wingbacks tonight could get something going for this LA4 squad. They need the victory. A tie wouldn't be bad, but a victory would be excellent. And what a way that what a victory that would be to book a spot in the West Coast Championship. It would be a pretty nice Cinderella story, if you ask me, Arts, for LA Force to have. They had a, a rough start to the season to come from behind and end up coming up and ended up winning a game and against Cal United, who has had quite the season, Art. They, had, they have great, they've had a great season, very offensive season, I would say. I mean, like almost every other game, they're scoring three goals. I mean, just take a look at the, we're looking at the schedule right now. In the first game, they played against Oakland Roots. It resulted in a draw, three to three. Then you look at when they played against uh, 1904 FC, three to one. Very next game, LA Force, three to nothing. And you look at the last two games, Four to one victory against 1904, and then the first matchup in Championship Stadium, three to nothing. So this is a very high offensive Cal United team. And if you're LA Force, you got to play the defensive game. You can't allow Cal United to attack. And off the free kick, that was Gustavo Villalobos, who was down for a bit. And Villalobos, very familiar with this organization, Los Angeles Force as well. He recently was a member of FC Golden State of the NPSL. So he definitely knows how this team plays. And we all know that Gustavo Villalobos, surely a very dangerous player. He can score and he has the speed and he, could, he also has plenty of assists as well on the season. Now Colwell looking to send it up the field. He has Merlano. Merlano doing a good job keeping possession. Got it for a moment to Alvaro Madrigal, but now possession taken away by Cal United. And early on, we are seeing, we have seen some opportunities for both teams early on. But within the last few minutes, we are seeing Cal United strikers control possession and creating more chances, especially getting corner kicks as well and free kicks. A nice heads up play for Daniel Amo, playing it back to his keeper, Miguel Marin, will be a throw in for Cal United. So there you go, you're seeing right now Cal United just trying to find the perfect counter attack early on in this one. Still trying to find the formula to try to get that first goal into the game. And now the throw in for Chris Cludy. He's trying to get away with something. He can't really say that's such a terrible thing. I think soccer players are trying to do that a lot, but the referee saying he was not having it, telling him to back up that long throw in for a moment. He actually was a little bit of trouble because now it will be a corner kick. Now let's see what Cal United could do with this. They are knocking on the door. I mean, they've already been knocking for a couple of times. I mean, this is corner kick number two, number two of the night. So they're threatening. You know, they're trying to trying to slam the door open, trying to find any holes, any windows that are potentially open. But LA Force doing a great job. And here comes the corner from Salgora. Header, that one going off the top of the crossbar. And it was Michael Bryant coming so close to scoring his second goal of the season. What a corner kick. Look at just look at this play right here. Corner kick up Bryant all over it and just got a little too underneath that the header there and just right off of the crossbar for Michael Bryant. I mean, the last last game that he played, it was against 1904. Bryant came up big and he got a goal and it was a pretty beautiful one, I would say, by Michael Bryant. He gets a start tonight and he's already looking pretty good with that shot. Always dangerous on set pieces. Michael Bryant definitely made a name for himself in the NPSL when he played for Orange County FC. Back the other way, after a header, that one going straight to Barrera. Now getting it to Fuerte. I think he was even you know, hearing some calls from his teammates to get rid of the ball. Kind of a dangerous play, especially with Marilano, so, so dangerous that 
scoring goals, and he will definitely make you pay if you hold onto the ball a little too long. And Merlano, with plenty of experience coming from Colombia, has played before in the top flight of Colombian football with Real Santander. And like I said earlier, two goals on the season. He's, he has scored the last two goals for the LA Force. Now sent down the field, looks like it was Cloutier, I believe, trying to get it towards Christian Tyrion. That one going all the way out of bounds. Looks like it's going to be Daniel Amo to take the throw in. We are in the 13th minute of play. It is scoreless between LA Force and Cal United strikers. I'm Artif Takari alongside Alex Naveja. Proud to be bringing you tonight's play-by-play -play on Maikujo via TVE Max. And Amo looking for an option. Had Ever De La Torre for a moment, but taken away. Kevin Gian had it for a moment, but that one actually going out of bounds will be a throw in once again for LA Force. And we are seeing some giveaways at times. And this has got to be a little alarming for Talis Peterson, head coach of the LA Force. These giveaways in the midfield or just giveaways in general well, that definitely will be costly eventually, especially with dangerous players from for Cal United like Christian Tierjung. Now Vion playing it back to Capriati. Capriati sends that one in, but headed headed back by Tanko straight to his keeper Marin. Now Marin looking for an option, slicing this one. Ricardo Ruiz trying to get the flick header. Michael Bryant getting it to Abraham Vion. Vion looks like he's tight roping on the sidelines. The LA Force players saying that it went out. Referees did referee on the sideline did not agree. Now Leo Dos Anjos. Excellent stop. Now to Manny Guzman. Looking for Amo on the outside. Now here comes Cal United Strikers. And I think we might have the first yellow card of the night. Not surprising. The good pass from Villalobos. Trying to get to Tier Young, and yes, we are seeing our first yellow card of the night. Cannot be surprised. I think some people might even say that might have been a good foul committed by Leo Dos Anjos. That's the counterattack that you're looking for if you're Cal United right there. You just need to find the proper counterattack. This is what, what coaches were talking about before this game even started. They were talking about, look, where we play a very fast-paced game. And this is exactly what they were doing. LA Force, I pro I think that that was a good stop on their end right there because it looked like Cal United was going to be onto something and potentially the first goal of the game right there. So if you ask me, good stop by LA Force. Came a little expensive with a yellow card. We all know these fouls are going to happen sometimes. You know, these players are going to have to make those sacrifices. But here comes the free kick. Looks like it's going straight to Marine. So not too much trouble, but for a moment with the footing, I kind of wanted to say maybe it could have been trouble, but with Miguel Marin's experience, that's hard to believe that there would have been, that there actually would have been, you know, some trouble there. Now Ricardo Ruiz to De La Torre, now Guzman playing it to the outside to Amo. Back to Guzman. He's got Leo Dos Anjos, and Dos Anjos taking a fall there. Referee says, play, referee's electing to play the advantage. You gotta like, that idea there, now a shot from Ricardo Ruiz from outside. He really wanted to tee off with his left foot. Dos Anjos is still down on the ground. Now what will Cal United do here? Tier Young to Kevin Gian. Still Gian, plenty of pressure being provided. Does go out of bounds, will be a throw in for Cal United. And you have actually, looks like Mark Tanko not happy with the call. The referee quick to settle everyone down. Can't be surprised about that. Look at the replay right here. There's the contact that was made. Refs decided to, let's play it through, gentlemen. Let's, trusting that this will calm down a little bit, but remember, we coming into this game, it was gonna be ag aggressive. And now Michael Bryant had it for a moment, taking the pass from Kevin Gian, was unable to keep possession. Now back the other way, it is De La Torre. Looks like he's got plenty of speed. Plays it to the outside. Will this be the opportunity for the force? You're kind of thinking that pushing the ball up more at that moment would have been the better option before the Cal United Strikers players would have had that chance to readjust. But can't be surprised to see the LA Force players not wanting to force anything. Now Tanko gets it to Ricardo Ruiz. 
Back to Tanko. Now Colwell. Colwell feeling a little bit of the pressure from Tier Young, but not too much. And that one headed away by Coronado. You gotta like the play of the center backs of Cal United Strikers. Ruiz. Still Ruiz. He's got Dos Anjos. And Dos Anjos can't be surprised. He was looking for Amo, but intercepted nicely by Gustavo Villalobos. For a moment, it looked like Cal United was going to be on a good counterattack. I think you had Villalobos a little unhappy with the official for not blowing the whistle. But we have been saying so far that this referee is letting them play. But, I mean, how long will this continue? Could be a couple of, might have been a couple of questionable uh, possibilities for a whistle. But either way, we still continue approaching the 18th, approaching the 18th minute of the match. Now, Ever De La Torre, hard to miss on this field with those blue cleats. Now Ruiz, getting it to Guzman, back to Ruiz. Earlier we mentioned now Ruiz could be trouble at times for this Cal United team. Now getting the pass to Merlano with the shot. That one just going a little high and wide, but you gotta like the build up play from Ricardo Ruiz and the LA Force. They're looking for their opportunities. They're looking for these good decision and shots. I'm gonna say that's not entirely a bad decision in taking a shot there. It's better to have, better to say, hey, I took the shot than say, oh, why didn't I take the shot? So if you're LA Force, good decision and shot, not exactly the best executed shot. With your way, got a Tez Barrera sometimes. Now Clutie trying to get to Tier Young. That looks like that could be dangerous. And yes, the whistle was blown. Christian Tier Young taken down by Miguel Marin, and it will be a penalty kick for Cal United strikers. And now we have to wonder who will take this. I'm pretty sure Christian Tier Young will want to take this one himself to add and add to his goal tally. It's a pretty risky play. Look at the replay right there. It was a good counterattack development. That was Clutie giving it over to Tier Young. Tier Young was trying to track it down. Uh, that's not exactly the best of fouls that you want to commit, especially being in the 18-yard box there. But this is going to be costly for LA Force. But if they do manage to come up with a save, this would be a huge play for LA Force. No surprise at all. It will be Christian Tier Young to take this penalty kick. And what an opportunity this is to take a lead, take the lead in the 20th minute. Here comes from Tier Young. He shoots and he scores. Miguel Marine going the wrong way. Cal United Strikers FC taking the lead. And it's Christian Tier Young with the goal. And there you go. Art, I told you that Tier Young was going to score tonight, whether it was you by called penalty, it. You called it. By, whether it was penalty kick or by just by however, however he scores. This is just a scoring machine for Cal United. You, this guy can't be stopped. Uh, look at this, this penalty kick. Easy. He had the goalkeeper fooled right there, 100%. Tier Junk thinking left all the way. Goalkeeper thought right, and there you have it. And going back to the penalty, when you were talking about Miguel Marin, you pretty much could say that he just came out to no man's land. That's, that was a that was a tough situation. You want to look? I'm sure he'd like to look back and say things like, "Hey, maybe I shouldn't have committed that foul. Maybe I could have done this better." But that was a tough situation to be in. And now, more importantly, though, how will? LA Force respond. They're down one nothing. I'm sure they're not in the mood to see a repeat of the result that took place in Irvine at Championship Soccer Stadium. But back the other way, Kevin Gian having a little bit of give and go with Abraham Vion, cleared down the field. But prior to that goal, there was excellent play from Ricardo Ruiz. Like I said, one of the players to watch from to watch out for tonight, along with Madrigal, one, the other winger. And Merlano did have that shot. It was a little high and wide, but one thing's for sure is they need to test Barrera. And now, is this going to be an opportunity for Cal United? Easy call for the official. Vion taken down. And looks like we will see another yellow card. And I'm pretty sure this time, yes, it will. It is a yellow card to Alex Colwell, one of the center backs. Clear yellow card right there for Colwell. I mean, full-on contact right there. It looked like there was a beautiful counterattack that was developing there for Cal United, and you saw LA Force trying to get a stop there. Resulted in another yellow card. And I think this game is definitely showing to be a little bit of trouble for LA Force. Yes, there's plenty of time to go, but they're down one nothing. We're seeing Cal United dominate with possession. Like I said, they're also they're leading one nothing. But now you're seeing more yellow cards as well for LA Force. Something has got to change. And here comes a free kick from Salguero. Easily picked up 
Easily into the hands of Marin. Now he's in a hurry to try and get this one down the field to Marvin Merlano. And that one headed away by Aiden Coronado. Now Chris Cludi had it for a moment, now loses it. Now Guzman, that's a good ball to Merlano. Trying to get the crosser, he's taking a shot instead. And that one going, a nice save. That's That one going straight on goal, but a nice save by Barrera. And Cal United remains ahead, one nothing. And Steven Barrera, also known as the Bear. I like to say it like that just because, I mean, you can't just say the bear. You got to say the bear. You got to have it with a growl right there. Or you got to add a little extra to it. But again, this is just excellent goalkeeping by Barrera. This has been the storyline for the whole entire season for Cal United. He's not exactly the type of goalkeeper that's going to allow very many goals in one game. I mean, the only game that he allowed by three was the very first game over in Laney College against Oakland Roots. And now back the other way, maybe an opportunity across in front. Having just actually goes right through the goal mouth area. But LA Force players unable to be in the right place at the right time to try and find that equalizer. But what an opportunity that was. I think we will see, I think we are going to see some more scoring opportunities from LA Force. And if they really want to give themselves a chance to win this game, I, like I said before, there's plenty of time in this one. But I feel like right now they really have that heightened sense of urgency where they would just love that opportunity where it would just be so fitting for them to find that equalizer very early. But either way, they need to stick to their game plan. Now here is the right back, Mark Tenko, getting it to Manny Guzman, looking for Dos Anjos. And Dos Anjos feeling the pressure from Christian Tierjung. Tierjung able to score plenty of goals, but also knowing his role when his team is trying to stop an attack as well. Now Amo, looking for Ricardo Ruiz, takes a couple of deflections. Now Ruiz had some trouble with Chris Cludi. It's now to the outside. Referee blows the whistle over the foul committed on Alvaro Madrigal. Now will be a free kick for the LA Force. You really have to appreciate what LA Force is going on. You really have to appreciate right now what LA Force is doing. I mean, they're trailing this one one to nothing, but you know that they're not entirely giving up on this one. And you know, still plenty of time, as you said, Art. I'm not expecting the game to finish like this one to nothing. And here comes the free kick. Is this the opportunity for the Force? A good one, parried by the fists of Steven Barrera and Christian Tyrion, clearing it to safety, not wanting to take any chances. So Barrera able to parry that one out. You had to wonder if that, that looked like for a moment it could have been trouble. Now Daniel Amo getting it to Leo Dos Anjos. Merlano had it for a moment. He tumbled. I don't think the referee was going to be blowing the whistle there. Now Ever De La Torre playing it to the outside to Madrigal. Dangerous with that left foot with the cross. Did take a deflection from Chris Cludi and that will be a corner kick for the LA Force. This is the first corner kick for LA Force. So we'll wait and see what they end up doing here with the first one. See if they can brew something up to be able to get the first goal. We'll wait and see, Art. And Alvaro Madrigal, I'm assuming he'll be taking the corner, but Ricardo Ruiz right next to him. Well, they want to play the short, they do. It goes to Ruiz, back to Madrigal, sent across looking for Dos Anjos, headed away. And Salguero, Looking for an option. There was some some contact there. Now the ball went straight to Guzman. I think you have the Cal United players unhappy that the whistle was not blown. Now Amo. Once again, looking for Madrigal. Earlier on, it has been mentioned that Madrigal and Ruiz at times could be a lot of trouble with their speed and their technique. Now Tanko is he gonna wanna pull the trigger from outside instead was trying to get it towards, I wanna say Guzman. And now Gustavo Villalobos the other way. The quick touch from Tyrion, actually going right, going right to Guzman. Now to down the, down the left side of the field. Madrigal for a moment was trying to take possession but Barrera not taking any chances, sends that one out of bounds, will be a, will be a throw in for the force. That's a great stop by LA Force, I would have to say. 
Cal United, they were coming up on a counter attack. They looked like they were wasting no time on looking for goal number two. Instead, LA Force gets a very good stop, keep the ball in the Cal United side of the pitch, and they're still working on this possession. Now, Ricardo Ruiz had it for a moment, but looks like I just want to say he swung and missed. He obviously want to have that one back. Now, given away, we're seeing some giveaways now from Cal United. Maybe an opportunity. De La Torre tumbled. It seems like we're seeing a few players tumble. LA Force keeps possession. Try and take a shot from way outside. You gotta like the defensive play from Cal United. Now Dos Anjos trying to receive the pass. What a great adjustment that was. Getting it now to his right back, Tanko. Tanko faking the shot. Is he gonna wanna take the shot? Instead, plays it to the outside. And once again, we're seeing the opportunities in the buildup play for the LA Force. But it seems like those final passes or those final touches are not really working very well. I think there's plenty of frustrated people on that LA Force bench, but they are doing what they can to find that equalizer. Now Ricardo Ruiz, excellent teamwork we see between him and Alvaro Madrigal, covering lots of field, taking up lots of space. Now Daniel Amo, that will be a free kick. Referee instructing Amo to keep that ball in a dead position, but LA Force doing everything they can to find that equalizer. Oh, the LA Force, they are working pretty hard tonight. Expect them to be in the hunt, and I'm gonna say they are gonna get this goal coming up pretty soon. Look at how, look at how hard they're working. Now Tanko playing it to the outside to Ever De La Torre. Still De La Torre fakes the cross. It elects instead to play it back to Ricardo Ruiz. Ruiz switching the field. He has Daniel Amo. And is Amo gonna send this one into the penalty area? He does. And a little flick touch. And it looks like it will be a corner kick. I wanted to say for a moment, I thought from my view that it was Merlano who got the last touch, but no, but will be another corner kick. And I think we're gonna see Madrigal send this one. I'm sure he's hoping to send this one in a very favorable spot on the on, on in that Cal United penalty area. But I think he's, but we're seeing Ricardo Ruiz approaching Madrigal once again. Are they gonna play it short? And here it comes from Madrigal. Did go off one of the players from Cal United and it will be a throw in deep in Cal United territory. You really have to appreciate the defenders for Cal United. Just such a veteran group that has a lot of experience and able to get some stops there in the 18-yard box, make the job a little easier for the Bear and Steven Barrera. A throw in from Tanko. Looks like a little bit of a mix up there, but does go out of bounds. You had the LA Force players saying that it was a throw in for them, but the linesmen did not agree. Of course, can't look at that. You can't take too much into that. Of course, we always know there are always some players are always going to be saying that it belongs to them. The header from Tanko off the throw in. Now, Ricardo Ruiz. Still, Ruiz had Villalobos on him. Now, Colwell. Now, Leo Dos Anjos. Switching the field a bit. Ball finds his way back to Colwell. And Colwell, many times feeling that pressure from Tyrion. Now that quick touch was almost getting to Ever De La Torre, but sent out of bounds by Michael Bryant. Another throw in for the force deep in Cal United territory. And that throw in finds his way towards Ever De La Torre, but there was a handball in the penalty area, and that will be a free kick for Cal United strikers. This will be an opportunity for Cal United to slow things down, actually have a possession here, LA Force has had the possession for a very a long time and still coming up empty on all of these possessions. Art still looking for that first goal, but here's an opportunity for Cal United to either make it a 2 nothing game or expect a perfectly executed counterattack by LA Force. And you, know, you mentioned, of course, we're seeing LA Force, it's easy for them to be frustrating. You're losing one nothing you're getting some good possession, you're sending some balls into the penalty area and you're not being rewarded with the goal. Yes, very frustrating, but I think they cannot be upset with themselves in regards to how this game is going. They are creating some good build-up play, especially from Ricardo Ruiz and Alvaro Madrigal. Now, free kick 
for Cal United. And Capriotti plays it instead to Coronado. And now it's a good turn, good possession. You got to like what you see from Kevin Gian. But Mark Tanko not taking any chances. Does go out of bounds for a Cal United throw in. As in this one, deep in LA Force territory, you have to wonder if maybe it's going to be Salguero launching this one deep into that LA Force penalty area instead of playing it short. It gets back to Salguero. Still Salguero with the cross. This could be trouble. It's not cleared out, but there looks like there might have been some contact. For a moment, I thought it was going to be Kevin Gian with an opportunity to make it 2 0. So the flag did come up. LA Force with a free kick. We are in the 33rd minute of play. It is 1 0. Cal United Strikers on the goal from Christian Tierjung from the, actually the penalty spot in the 20th minute of play. Now, Ever De La Torre taken down from behind by Michael Bryant. And yes, I think we will be seeing Michael Bryant going into the book. Michael Can't Bryant. be very surprised. Michael Bryant did not agree with that call, but an easy call for the official. And earlier this game, Michael Bryant came dangerously close to scoring his second goal of the season when his header off a corner kick bounced off the top of the crossbar. But now he's just got himself in the book with a yellow card. Now Mark Tanko sends that one in to the Cal United penalty area. Now Ricardo Ruiz, is he going to rip one from outside? He fakes a shot. Still Ruiz, now Guzman. His ball going off the head of Cludi. I was kind of wondering who he was trying to get that one to. I think you even could hear some of the reactions of the LA Force fans wondering where that one was going as well. And the flag did come up for offside. Will be a free kick for Cal United. You still kind of wonder on that play. You, no one was there on the left side. You can't make mistakes if you're LA Force, especially against a team against Cal United. Those are precious possessions that you are not going to get back. And now back the other way. Kevin Gian getting that ball to Vion. Still Vion, is he able to turn the corner? He did take a little tumble, but there was not any physical play on that one. You gotta actually say good defensive play on the part of the LA Force. Now Capriotti looking for Bryant, instead that one going straight to Ever De La Torre. Now Tanko sending it down the field to Merlano. He has not had a lot of these 1v1 situations. Now it's still Merlano. Had Aiden Coronado on him. Plays it back to Manny Guzman. Still Guzman. Now Guzman switching the field. Finding Alvaro Madrigal. Madrigal sending that one in, going off the head of Michael Bryant. Seems like that's been a reoccurring theme throughout this first half. Passes or shots being deflected or headed away by the Cal United players. Now back the other way. It's Villalobos. Villalobos. Getting it now to Kevin Gian. Salguero joining in on the action. Still Salguero. Salguero still has it. He shoots. And nice save from Miguel Marin. Gotta like the play from the left back. Gonzalo Salguero. Coming very close to making it 2 0 for Cal United. Now back the other way. Is this the chance for the force? A free kick. Kind of kind of wondering, will there be a yellow card? But there will be a free kick for the force as we are in the last 10 minutes of the first half. Just very quickly after seeing that replay, it was a beautiful shot by Salguero that time. He saw a window at least slightly open, decided to take a shot. And if even if you have the slightest of opportunities, take the shot. Make Put the pressure on the goalkeeper. But Marin, beautiful goalkeeping himself, brilliant, absolutely brilliant coming up, executing and not not giving into pressure. He saw his opportunity to get that save, still keeping it to just a one to nothing deficit. And what a save that was. Now looking at, at who's down on the ground, Alvaro Madrigal looks like he's a little banged up for the force. And Michael Bryan is actually on the ground for Cal United Strikers. You have to wonder, he's still on the ground. We're hoping he's okay, but is this going to, are we gonna have a substitution maybe in a couple minutes if he's unable to get up? Well, it looks like the training staff is helping Bryant up. He's going to have to actually be escorted off of the field. Then after the very next play, he can actually join back onto the pitch. 
I guess we could call it playing with 10 men, maybe for a little bit, but I, from him walking out the field, I'd like to say that he should be back pretty quickly. But either way, it is a free kick for the LA Force. We are in the 38th minute of the match. Cal United Strikers FC leading 1-0 over the LA Force. Christian Tierjong so far with the only goal of the game coming from the penalty spot. And it was Tier Young who had that scoring opportunity and was fouled by Miguel Marin. Like we said, that ball was in no man's land, so not much you really could do about it looking back at it. But here comes the free kick for the force. And that one going straight to Steven Barrera. And when you look at these opportunities, you wonder, you know, what was the plan there? But of course, for the standpoint of the Cal United fans and players, obviously what they wanted to see. Now back the other way. For a moment, it looked like Abraham Vion was going to have a handle on that one. But instead, it's actually now was given away. Vion had it for a moment and got it to Kevin Gian, to Christian Tyrion, but he was unable to keep possession. And Dos Anjos able to break that one up. Now getting it to Tanko. Now it's Ever De La Torre. Still De La Torre surrounded by white shirts. You got to like the thinking on that through ball that he wanted, where he wanted to find Merlano, but the Cal United defenders just closing down all kinds of space. Beautiful development of plays there for LA Force. You just, you saw them coming up with the counter attack. They had, it was a good idea by LA Force coming up with that, with that through ball there. Unfortunately, just a little too much sauce on there resulted in a bitter fi uh, finish. And Christian Tierjong getting it to Kevin Gian. He gotta like the play here from the attacking midfielders of Cal United and of course Tierra being the striker. Now Villalobos with a shot from outside. That one going straight to Miguel Marin. But we are seeing the Cal United players testing Miguel Marin and Miguel Marin of course showing that he's up to the challenge with time winding down in the first half. Tanko plays it back to Alex Colwell. To Dos Anjos, back to Colwell. It's like Colwell, plenty of time. Now Dos Anjos. Now Amo. And what will the LA Force do? What will they attempt to do these last few minutes of the half? You talk about perfect timing. If they were to find a way to score the equalizer in these final minutes of the first half, they surely will be going into the halftime locker room with plenty of momentum. Now a little bit of miscommunication set down the field. Colwell gathers that one with no problem. You know, if you go into halftime being tied up, that's that's actually great if you're LA Force. If you go into the locker room being one to nothing, it's still not the worst of days. It's still not rainy, gloomy skies on top of you. But that second half has to be the most productive second half of the season. You, you can't, there's no room for error in that second half, but still, still five minutes with some uh, stoppage time left. Yeah, definitely would say there's gotta be like the thing there'd be maybe one or two minutes of stoppage time. Now back the other way, is that ball gonna get to Kevin Gian? But Mark Tanko doing a great job shielding, but at that last moment, looks like I made a maybe too quick of a prediction. That very last moment, it actually did go out of bounds. Last went off of Mark Tanko, and this will be a corner kick for Cal United. And what an opportunity this would be. And of course, to take to double the lead this late in the first half. In moments like these, this is where the LA Force players really need to tighten up and mark up. So here's another corner kick for Cal United. We'll wait to see what's to come. Salguero will be on the corner kick. Salguero earlier had an opportunity to score, was saved by Marin. Now here he comes. That one going straight to Marin. And Marin not in a hurry to send this one out. I think these last few minutes, you got to say, are very crucial. LA Force will be hoping, like no other, to find that go ahead goal. Excuse me, to find that equalizer. What a nice move by Madrigal, but was unable to keep possession. But also, on the other hand, with LA Force, they also got to tighten up and realize that pushing up too many players this late, and they really could result on them being burned on the counter. Now Chris Clutie getting it to Fuerte, back to Clutie. And Clutie playing it deep towards Tier Young. Flag did stay down. Giovanni Vasquez 
plays it back to Marine. High into the air, off the chest of Guzman. Now Amo. Amo's looking for Merlano. Merlano was able to keep it in. And now, for a moment, looked like Barrera was not really sure how that one was going to turn out, but he came out quickly to gather that one, not turn that into a very dangerous situation with Ever De La Torre providing plenty, plenty of pressure. Brilliant idea that time by, by Barrera. Him coming up big, and he read the situation, did the right thing, was able to come up and pick that one up before the pressure was coming up, and don't want to allow a goal like that to get past you, especially a player like Barrera. Now play deep towards Gian. He did have a touch on it, but it was Mark Tanko to send that one out of bounds, not wanting to take any risks. Mark Tanko playing as the right back, but doing a great job of providing help defense. And yes, that move earlier from Alvaro Madrigal, and you gotta like the technique and footwork from the talented winger. Now Villalobos, looks like he almost lost it for a moment, but still has possession. Still Villalobos playing it to the outside to Villon. Villon tried to get it back to Villalobos, but instead got the Tiriang. Now back to Villon. Villon looking for an option. He's got Salguero. Villon once again with a nice turn. Tiriang had a, had a touch on it. Unable to keep possession. Sent down the field. Looking for Merlano. And Merlano able to get that one away from Coronado. Still Merlano with the shot. And that one blocked by Fuerte will be a corner kick. And I feel like you had some of the Cal United fans expecting a whistle for maybe a foul by Merlano. But of course Merlano doing what he can to try and create a scoring opportunity for the LA Force. What an opportunity there for LA Force. Look at this. Trying to get the shot off right there. Fuerte coming up and able to get the deflection. But here's a corner kick coming for LA Force. Looks like it will be Madrigal once again. Trying to play short again. Ruiz sending it in, but wow, the flag did come up for offside and it's one of those situations where you don't want to see you don't want to see your team being whistled for offside on that short corner. Talk about a disciplined back line from the Cal United defenders. You know what, that's not something you want to do. That's a big mistake by LA Force there, you know. You don't know what could have happened and what could have came from that corner kick. They're already coming in hot with that with that nice counter attack coming over to the Cal United side of the pitch. And now to come off cold right there. Now Cal United with potentially coming up with another goal threatening with Tierjung with the possession. And we are just about to enter stoppage time. Tier Young looking for Chris Clooney. And it's just been announced that we will have two minutes of stoppage time. Cal United trying to get something going with Chris Clooney. It actually goes out of bounds. Will be a goal kick for the home side, LA Force. And of course, the LA Force would just love to give these home fans something to cheer about. But I like I pretty I think I'd be quick to say that. The amount of fans for each of these teams is pretty even, considering Cal United only playing in Irvine. Not much of a trip for this showdown with the LA Force. Now Amo playing it down the left side. A cross sent in, a header from De La Torre. Not much trouble for Steven Barrera, but LA Force just trying to do what they can to level this one. Now Barrera. We played about, we played one minute of stoppage time. Kevin Gian trying to get that flick header off the long clearance. Colwell looking for De La Torre. Was not able to win that battle with Coronado. Now Salguero and that clearance kind of dangerous because it looked like it was so close to being intercepted by Guzman. But fortunately for Salguero, now he sees Villalobos with the ball to Villon. Now Bryant, now Cludie. Cludie, of course, has scored this season for Cal United. Plenty of dangerous players. Now Villon to Tiryong, trying to get it back to Villon. It looks like, I feel like Villon was not expecting it. It was intercepted by Dos Anjos. Now an easy call for the official. So Abraham Villon whistle for the foul. And 
I think that should just about wrap up the first half. We have played two minutes of stoppage time. Now off the free kick, it looks like now Christian Tyrion going into the book for not providing that space of 10 yards on a free kick. And if you want to talk about silly and unnecessary yellow cards, there is one right there for Christian Tyrion of Cal United Strikers. That's not, those are mistakes that you should not be committing if you're Cal United right there. Christian Tyrion, you should know better, you know, Time is, it's all on your side, but those aren't mistakes that you want to give away. Those are not possessions you want to give away either. Especially this late in the half. Now that long free kick, the header in front and the goal! Just like that! And Alex Cowell off the header and the cross. It is 1-1, LA4 scoring in the third minute of stoppage time in the first half. Talk about a perfect finish to this first half for the home side LA Force. Alex Colwell with the goal. Wow. LA Force coming back into this one, tying things up, making it a brand new ball game. And you know what, Art? It's going to be a brand new game going into the second half. Look at that. You're going to go into the locker room being victorious. There it is. Colwell coming in and seeing the hole over on the right side of the goalpost. But wow. LA Force taking advantage of that opportunity, getting it past the Bear. Unbelievable. You talk about a crazy end to a half. From the standpoint of Cal United Strikers FC, this is just a disaster end to the first half. They are winning one nothing. They're probably even saying the whistle should have blown a little earlier. But right before that, let's go back to that yellow card. How you were talking about those unnecessary mistakes. Christian Tiran picks up that yellow card, that free kick from Bar that free kick from Miguel Marin goes off the head of one center back to the other, goes off the head of Giovanni Vasquez, finished off nicely by Colwell. 1-1 in the score at the half between Los Angeles Force and Cal United Strikers. What a second half we have in store. You know what? You said it just right right now, Art. The second half is gonna be, it's just gonna be a battle between these two. The winner of this game will be going over to the championship game, wherever the location may be. But expect a good one, folks. I told you guys it was not gonna be a one to nothing game forever. It was gonna, it was just a matter of time. But again, going back to that, that yellow card issued to Tierjung. Those are not possessions that you want to give away. You want to keep as many possessions as possible. You don't want to give you, give them away. And when you do give them away, you're going to make mistakes there. And this is a big time mistake that Tier Jung made. Yes, you scored the first goal of the game, but you committed a big time mistake. Now, going into the locker room, you got to shake it off. Now, going into the second half, you got to turn the page, flip the switch, and it's time to play soccer in the second half. Looking at the highlights from the first half, of course, one of the first notable highlights we bring up is the foul committed by Marin, which led to Christian Tierjung scoring from the penalty spot. That gave Cal United Strikers a one nothing lead after only 20 minutes. And once again, we'll be talking about this one throughout the night, especially if this result ends up favoring LA Force. The long free kick from Miguel Marin, the header from Giovanni Vasquez, and knocked in by Joshua Colwell, tying the game up at one. So that's the halftime score. It is 1-1 between the Los Angeles Force and Cal United Strikers. I am Art Eftakari, joined by Alex Aveja, of course. Proud to be bringing you tonight's play-by-play -play on MyCujo via TVE Max. It's been an exciting game so far, Alex. And I think that you just gotta wonder. I think right now, instead of using the word wonder, if I was about to say you gotta wonder what's going on, as in what's being said by head coach Don Eber of Cal United to his players. And I think the obvious answer is that he's telling them you guys were a, little, a bit asleep on that last free kick to end the half, which led to the goal from Colwell. I'm pretty sure, you know, we're not over there. We don't have anybody mic'd up, but I'm pretty sure that's how the conversation is going. Well, Art, you definitely, this is exactly what I was telling you. You gotta play the full 90 minutes plus stoppage time, however much time 
that is. You don't want to don't want to stop playing for the last few seconds of a half or or the last few seconds of the game because it could be plays like that that could get you back into the game and you know what if you're LA Force you're going into the second half confident you're going in there great you're going in there feeling amazing and you know it's going to be a fun one to watch art and I mean for those of you guys that are out there watching this game we wish you guys were here in attendance. The attendance here in Rio Hondo is just amazing. It's just, you look at one side of the stadium and it's full of Calder United fans. And you look at the other side, it's filled with LA Forest fans. So it's just been a great one to take in. A lot of Cal United fans, a lot of LA Forest fans taking in a great one, but I can't wait to get into that second half part. You know, you're mentioning can't, you're mentioning that you can't wait to get to the second half. I mean, you're absolutely right. These two teams putting on a good display tonight. As we, you know, it's not a surprise that we've talked about the three nothing win from Cal United when these two teams met at Championship Soccer Stadium in Irvine at Orange County Great Park. But the fact is, like you said earlier today, that this is not Championship Stadium. We are in Whittier. LA Force is at home, and everyone. You know that, we know that phrase, right? There's no place like home. And we really are seeing, you know, when you look, when you compare the rosters from, for LA Force from this game to the game in Irvine, yes, there are definitely some differences. It's not a surprise. There's plenty of depth with this organization. You just know that, of course, even from the standpoint of Cal United Strikers, they are not coming into this game thinking, okay, we're gonna see the same formation. We're gonna see the same players. This is how it's gonna go. No, they knew they were in for some kind of a surprise. They obviously got started off well with the goal for the penalty spot from Christian Tyrion. But like we said, even with that last goal from the force, we know that the strikers, we know that Cal United strikers probably cannot be thrilled with what happened. We know they're not thrilled with what happened. But from the standpoint of the LA Force, you can't say that they didn't deserve the equalizer. They were controlling possession at times and having some good build-up play, getting some shots. They were getting frustrated as well. But what a way to end the first half. And uh, you, now you just have to say, you know, we're not saying that just because LA Force scored late that they're gonna win and that's it and it's over. No, but you gotta say that LA Force has the momentum right now going into the second half.
Now we are back, getting ready for the start of the second half. This is Nisa Soccer. I'm Art Iftikari bringing you tonight's play-by-play -play with Alejandro Naveja. You like to be called Alejandro or Alex? I got, I'm switching it up, just so you know. Well, Art, my full name is Alexander Alexander. Okay, well, let's just say sometimes when you hear the different last names, you just get accustomed to saying it a certain way. But it is, we are ready for the second half. LA Force and Cal United Strikers FC tied up at one. Really excited for this second half. I mean, is this Nisa soccer at its finest, Alex? You know what? You can't ask, can't ask for anything better right here, Art. I mean, you're getting the top two teams in the, on the west side, and they're going at it right here. Now, Evan Waldrip is going to be joining, coming onto the pitch for Cal United. So. Looks like Gian is going to be going back to the sidelines. He's not going to be starting this second half, but maybe a change of formula for Cal United. Maybe this will help them get another goal on the board. But you know what? You can't ask for anything better. It's going to, we're almost at the start of this second half. It's tied up 1 1 right now. And this is a brand new game. So I'm just excited. I can't wait to see what's to come for this second half. And all I can say, folks, is you do not, do not need to go anywhere for these next 45 minutes. This is going to be soccer at its finest right here. Winner of this game will be going to the Western, into the championship game. But you don't want to miss out on these 45 minutes. And here we are starting the second half. 1-1 LA Forest and Cal United Strikers FC. Remember, let's recap those goals in the first half. Christian Tierjong scoring from the penalty spot for Cal United at about the 20 minute mark. And Alex Colwell tying it up in the third minute of stoppage time of the first half. That's how we are 1 1. And now Cal United getting things started off quickly. Gustavo Villalobos playing it back to Capriati. Ball finds his way back to Villalobos. And there was one substitution made, of course, for Cal United to start the second half. That's Evan Waldrip who came on to replace Kevin Gian. So let's see how that how that change from head coach Don Ebert changes things up bit changes things up a bit for Cal United. And a free kick already. We're only barely a minute into the second half. It will be a free kick for Cal United strikers. It looks like it will be Gonzalo Salguero to take this free kick. And earlier we mentioned how. I'm sure there was plenty of frustrated players for Cal United conceding that late goal. Well, let's see how they start the second half. Now header off that free kick did last go off a member of one of the players from LA Force and it will be a corner kick for Cal United. Rolling into the second minute of the second half. Let's see if Cal United could retake the lead really early. You know what, if you're Cal United, you want to attack early on here in this second half. And if you're LA Force, just like you did in that first half, take advantage of any mistakes that Cal United makes. Now here comes the corner. And that one headed out. Now Ricardo Ruiz, it's like it was Daniel Lama who headed that one out. And then Ruiz tried to get something going and said, lost that one to Cludi, got to Vion. And to Cludi back to Vion. Now Tier Young. Will he have a chance to take a shot? Plays it to the outside to Villalobos, surrounded by players in black shirts. Now Salguero switches the field. He's got Villon. Here comes the cross. And now, for the, right there, he saw Fuerte with the opportunity to maybe head that one in. For a moment, it looked like it was going to be, like it was going to be Marine to corral that ball, but that was a dangerous one, and it was an opportunity for Cal United to retake the lead. That was just a beautiful development of plays there and a brilliant cross there for the for Cal United. Unfortunately, Fuerte just could not get that through the net. So they're still facing off, tied up here in the second half, and your nails, you're going to be biting at your nails in every possession. And you're mentioning whoever's watching being nervous. Well, just for a moment there, the goal scorer for LA Force, Alex Colwell, 
Looked like he was kind of in that situation where he wasn't sure if he should have passed it back to Marine or whether or not Marine was going to come get it himself. And yeah, those are those situations that you got to be careful with. And now Guzman, a dangerous ball from Guzman, the you know very very close, you know, very nearly led to a turnover that could have been a goal-scoring opportunity for Cal United. Cleared back the other way. It seems like force being a little shaky to start this second half. You, know, you got to wonder. Will these first few minutes be that excellent opportunity for Cal United to take the lead? We are seeing them playing with like a heightened sense of urgency and, and what a great move and stop. Excellent patience from Alvaro Madrigal, now to De La Torre, now Guzman. And Guzman, of course, has been having a good night playing at the defensive midfield position, but I want to be quick to say that if he's going to have some of those dangerous balls in the defensive third, I think we could see head coach Talis Peterson making a change and he's got plenty of depth available on his bench tonight. Now let's see what the force can do. Mark Tanko having a little bit of trouble with it and I think we just saw possibly Ruiz fall to the ground. It was not Ruiz but we're seeing one player on the ground. Pretty sure it is actually Tanko grabbing his face and this does not look good from our view. Looks like there was some contact there. Still waiting to see on who was who was the one that made the contact on Tanko. Looks like the training staff coming in to attend to Tanko. Well, either way, he was grabbing his face, and it did not look like a good situation. I just from from what we saw, you like to think that it was purely accidental. I think I, I want to say it was prob quite possibly Salguero. Looks like that was Salguero when he was trying to get through some LA Force players there a little bit. The hand kind of going a little wild there and actually accidentally getting contact with Tanko. And it is Tanko who momentarily steps off the pitch, but he, the good news, he appears to be fine. Should be back on the field pretty quickly. Now the throw in going straight off the head of Michael Bryant. Ricardo Ruiz trying to win that battle with Abraham Vion on the far side of the field. That'll be a matchup to keep an eye on if that keeps on occurring throughout the night. Now the throw in from Salguero to Michael Bryan, and Michael Bryan wanted to get it back to Salguero, but instead goes in the wrong direction and a throw in for LA Force. Now Chris Clutie got to like the play. He just made the step up the, that near, very nearly could have been a counterattack opportunity for Cal United, but now LA Force Trying to get something going, it's Ever De La Torre. Trying to get it back, but a lot of traffic at that middle third of the field. Now back the other way. Is this the opportunity once again? It was Tier Young for a moment, now Waldrip. Playing it to the outside to Villalobos. Still Villalobos trying to cut it in. He was looking for Tier Young. Villalobos gets it back. For a moment, it looked like he, for a moment, it looked like he wanted to rip it from outside. But actually has that one taken away, cleared down the field. And Aiden Coronado, not taking any chances, sends that one out of bounds, will be a throw in for the LA Force. You see right there, Cal United just trying to come up with their style of play, just trying to come up with a counterattack to, to come up. But you know, LA Force doing an excellent job of reading the counterattack on Cal United. They are already accustomed to it. They're saying, hey, you know what? We know that they're going to be coming up with a counterattack. So we got to make sure we stop them, get the stops that we need. And that's all you got to do. You got to put the wall on in front of the car. Now the throw in, it was Tanko getting it to Merlano. Not much coming of that opportunity. Cleared down the field. Looks like Colwell having a little bit of miscommunication with Vasquez. And now Marine coming out just to clear it. Seems like that's happened on more than one occasion tonight. But is Madrigal able to keep it in? Yes, he does. Still Madrigal. He's trying to go 1v1 against Cludi. Trying to cross it for an opportunity. But actually blocked nicely by Cludi. Now Villalobos was trying to get that one to Waldrip, but instead it gives that one away to Daniel Amo. Still Amo trying to find that space, really hard to find that space with all those Cal United players taking away the opportunity, but instead it looks like it did last go off of Daniel Amo and it will, will be a goal kick for Cal United. 
You know, you really have to appreciate that veteran presence that Gluty puts on inside of that 18-yard box, playing his position, playing defense, and all that. You saw him staying still when he was taking on against Madrigal there. Madrigal was trying to juke him out, trying to take him out for a dance, and you know, Gluty was playing hard to get and read that cross very easily, he was able to get a foot on it and able to come up with that stop. And Capriotti lost it for a moment, but what a great readjustment he made. The physical play keeping up, and now Chris Cludy leading the attack, playing it to the outside to Villalobos. Still Villalobos with the cross. Looks like it did take a small deflection. Colwell getting his head on it as it goes straight to Guzman. Cleared out, not the safety, as it went straight to Salguero. And now it's Michael Bryant with a shot from out just outside, going a bit wide. Gotta like the opportunity, gotta like that shot taken by Michael Bryant. He wanting to test Miguel Marin, just going a bit wide, goal kick for LA Force. Just look at that, he was going through his defender, decided to go left, then changes his direction to the right, sees, sees one opportunity to take a shot, does so, and tries to put up Marin, and puts him into the test, but Marin, Continuously putting on some great goalkeeping tonight. And if it wasn't for that, if it wasn't for that penalty kick for Tier Young there, we could be looking at a one to nothing force lead. But Marin making one mistake and had to pay the price for it. So we'll see. We'll see what's to come in the second half. It's getting pretty interesting between these two clubs. And like you were saying, getting interesting physical play picking up. We are 10 minutes into the second half. Free kick now for the LA Force. It is 1-1. Lots of time left in this one. And here comes the free kick. Headed away. Now Villalobos trying to start the counter attack. But it was gonna be very difficult when he had Guzman and Alvaro Madrigal on him. Now Duncan Capriotti doing a great job tonight at the defensive midfield position. Ball finds its way to Coronado and you gotta like the patience of Aiden Coronado playing at center back, feeling the pressure from the LA Force players, not panicking at all whatsoever. Now Tier Young the other way. Is he able to get around Colwell? He does, he takes a shot. And what a nice save by Marine. And it will be another corner kick for Cal United and Christian Tyrion so close to getting his second of the night. You know, this Cal United team, they're getting it little by little. They're getting these brilliant shots. And look at that, Marine just able to get a hand on the shot, able to deflect that one away. Here's a corner kick for Cal United coming up, or it looks more like a throw in, or a, no, a corner kick actually. And it will be Gonzalo Salguero to take this corner. Dangerous all night with his left foot. And here it comes. Headed high into the air by Amo. Next off the head of Ricardo Ruiz. Switch in the field. Ball finds its way to Capriati. To Salguero. Now Coronado. Cal United being patient. Waiting for those opportunities. Evan Waldrip. The second half sub. Now Chris Cludy. You gotta like that move from Cludy. The cross. Marine was unable to get to it. And that header, looks like it was from Villalobos. Not too much on it. Did take a, a deflection as well, but went straight to Marine. But either way, we are seeing Cal United Strikers FC picking up the intensity as they are continuing to look for that go ahead goal. And of course, there's plenty of time left in this one, but we will be taking a look at the standings of the NISA Western Conference periodically, especially if the score remains the same as the minutes take away. Now, Chris Cludy first decided to fake and now trying to cross, but actually was unable to keep it in bounds. Will be a goal kick for the LA Force, but you got to like what you're seeing from, from Chris Cludy. Now we are seeing a substitution from the LA Force, and looks like it's gonna be Enrique Cardenas coming on for Ever De La Torre. And this substitution taking place in the 58th minute of the match. So you were talking about Chris Cludy a couple moments ago. Chris Cludy looked like he's, he's trying to be a leader, 
trying to lead the team and trying to see if he can he's trying to take the ball himself seeing if there's any windows any opportunities that for him to potentially get across trying to get the guys inside of the 18 yard box trying to look around but that's what good leaders do they're going to take the ball themselves they're going to look around try to get someone else involved in the game trying to get them to try to get a, to score because you know what it's just a back and forth affair it's a chess match here in this second half and off that long goal kick the ball went off the head of Michael O'Brien straight to Enrique Cardenas the man who just came on and that one sent in by Madrigal headed out the ball finds its way back to Madrigal Madrigal trying to send it to the same spot once again but this time Michael Bryant able to get in front of it. Now getting it to Tier Young. Now to the other side of the field. It's Vion. Finds Tier Young once again. And looks like Guzman whistled for the foul. That will be a free kick for Cal United. And I'm talking about the substitution for LA Force, Enrique Cardenas coming on for Ever De La Torre. And Enrique Cardenas, one of these players on LA Force who's actually played before for Orange County Blues, a team from the that's now known as Orange County Soccer Club of the USL Championship. So gotta like the substitution from Talis Peterson bringing on a more experienced player off the bench. Now back in action here, a lot of traffic. Not so much of the physical play, but now the ball finds its way to Waldrip. Still Waldrip. Eventually ball finding its way to Michael Bryant. And Bryant looking for Villalobos, and that's who he gets it to. Villalobos with the cross. Now Waldrip with the shot, turning. Didn't get that much on it, but it wasn't a bad shot regardless, but going straight to Miguel Marin. And Marin trying to get his players settled down before he sends this one out of his penalty area. And we have reached the hour mark for tonight's match. Once against 1-1, LA Force and Cal United Strikers FC. Nisa, West, Western Conference action. Cleared by Alex Colwell. Looking for Merlano, but Coronado like he's been doing all night. Not blowing any assignments. The throw in for the Force. Now Ricardo Ruiz. Not sure if you want to take on both players, but after that pass, he did get it back. Now Cardenas creating some trouble as well for the Cal United midfielders. Now play to the outside. The cross sent in, intercepted by Coronado and cleared. Off the head of Colwell. You had to see Mark Tanko with a flying header to try and to get the ball back to Colwell, but he actually, it's like he fell a little bit over Tier Young, tum, you know, kind of taking a hard fall to the ground. Tanko getting some major air that time. He was able to climb the ladder, trying to go right over Tier Young. Check out that play right there, trying to jump right over Tier Young, but that fall had to be painful there, but for Tanko getting some serious air, ended up landing on the side and this is some serious attention right here, folks. This isn't just your average. Maybe he's not injured, just trying to burn time. He is, could be potentially seriously hurt there. And this is a big time player that you don't want to lose if you're LA Force. He has a lot of speed and he provides a lot of good defense for LA Force. And you know what? You just hope that they could bring, L they could bring a Tanko back onto the pitch. And the one thing you also gotta like from what you see from Mark Tanko is that his effort. And you know, but the one thing to mention as well is that you said this is a player you would not want to have to make a substitution for. Absolutely. I mean, you you, you look at your back line, these are your four players that you're expecting that they are gonna be playing the full 90 minutes. And yeah, definitely would be a big loss for the force if Tanko had to come off. But fortunately after the trainer attending to him, I'm pretty sure he should be coming back on. Do you really expect Tanko to miss out in this game? He could be seriously injured, and I still think he'd come back. Yeah, I, I have to agree with you on that. I mean, Tanko, of course, showing just how badly, you know, when you look at that header he that he just pulled off to get the ball to Colwell, that's just saying 
one thing. Actually, we want to say it's really it's saying more than one thing. It's basically showing that how badly he wants this game for the Force, how badly he wants to win, and that's what you want to see. You want to see that effort. But now, taking away Gustavo Villalobos, maybe a chance for Cal United. Villalobos with the shot, and he scores! Just like that in the 64th minute of play. Off the turnover, and Gustavo Villalobos puts Cal United strikers back in front, two to one. And the Cal United strikers fans going absolutely nuts here in Rio Hondo College. And the last time these two teams met, Gustavo Villalobos scored against LA Force once again. Look at, just look at Villalobos. He saw the window. He said, hey, you know what? You guys have the window open. Let me go ahead and shut it for you guys by netting that one in. And now Cal United winning this one two to one. But you know what, Art? Plenty of ball game left. I'm still not sleeping and you know what? I'm still not convinced that it's going to finish like this 2-1. to one. I'm still going to say that there's still going to be more goals and you're saying right now that's the fourth goal for Gustavo Villalobos this season. This is just one of the weapons that Cal United has. And it's a 2-1 lead and I think from the standpoint of the LA Force when you talk about turnovers especially no matter where they take place but, turnover, but a turnover there led to a goal for Cal United. And Madrigal, the other way, trying to get something going. The LA Force know that this game is extremely important. Now they find themselves down 2-1. to one. But like, like you just said, Alex, plenty of time left in this one. About 25 minutes plus a little bit of stoppage time. How will the LA Force react? They can't, they got to react quickly, I'd say. They especially they want to get that win. Now Guzman from the outside taking a shot. It's blocked. Now Cludi clearing it down the field. And now these long balls, how crucial they can be. And Cal United just making a substitution as well. Omar Nuno just coming on. Another dangerous player up top with excellent goal scoring ability. Ball goes out of bounds, will be a throw in for Cal United. So they have Christian Tier Young out of the game, and they bring Omar Nuno. And let me tell you something, Art. This is another weapon for Cal United. This is a guy that can absolutely can change the game, make it a three-to-one game very quickly. And he has a huge presence. I mean, literally a huge presence in onto the pitch. This is a gargantuan-sized man. You can. This is a guy. Can is he's going to need to be double teamed. And Omar Nuno, very familiar, especially in the NPSL, scored plenty of goals for FC Arizona, and actually scored a goal last week against San Diego 1904 in that 4-1 victory. Now substitution for LA Force. We'll get to that in a moment. First throw in from Cludi. And it was Nuno getting his head on it, but it goes out of bounds for a goal kick. And that substitution we're seeing, James Allawine coming on to replace one of the center backs, Giovanni Vasquez, and that substitution taking place in the 67th minute. So Talis Peterson making a change with one of his center backs. You have to wonder if this is going to lead to the defense being rearranged a little bit, but I'm pretty sure that we will be seeing Alawine playing as one of the center backs next to Alex Colwell. Now Guzman able to win the ball, but it looks like it was Waldrip who was whistled for the foul for a dangerous play. Now it's Cardenas, plenty of speed to Guzman, trying to get it to the outside towards Alvaro Madrigal. Chris Cludi gets to it first, sends it out of bounds, throw in for the force deep in Cal United territory. Daniel Amo looking for an option. Sometimes I have always feel like this is the opportunity where you just should just launch it into that penalty area. And now it was thrown into the penalty area, but now a foul committed by the LA Force will be a free kick for Cal United. Oh, you gotta love how this game is turning out, Art. This is just getting so interesting. Every minute that passes by, there's just plays that are so interesting. This game just continues to impress, and there's just both of these teams just trying to fight for that spot. They know what's coming, but you can you know that these two teams are fighting for a purpose, for a reason for this game. And Gustavo Villalobos whistled for the foul. Like you said, fighting for this game. Villalobos whistled for the foul against Manny Guzman. Free kick for the force. 
Now Colwell, after receiving the ball, sending it down the field. Like to think he was looking for Merlano, but that one going straight to Barrera. Now getting it to the outside, Salguero. It's Omar Nuno. Had it for a moment, did not get the first touch he probably initially wanted. Going all the way back to Marine. Sent, sent all the way from one side of the field to the other, but actually it was Merlano whistled for offside. But now, after that quick restart, maybe an opportunity for the force. Played to the outside, Madrigal to Guzman. Now Tanko. Got it quickly to Ricardo Ruiz. And Ruiz, we know, always dangerous. Now Dos Anjos to Colwell. It's been a good night for Colwell, but his team is down 2-1. So that goal he scored in the first half, probably not much on his mind right now. Now maybe an opportunity, a little bit of a mix-up momentarily, but Aiden Coronado getting it out to safety, but now taken away by Enrique Cardenas. For a moment you were thinking he was going to want to take a shot from far out. Instead tried to get it to Ricardo Ruiz. Ball goes out of bounds. Vion for a moment thought it was still in play, but looks like it did go out of bounds for a throw. And now we're seeing another substitution for the LA Force. And we're seeing Bonifaci, Bonifaci Muchiri coming on for Alvaro Madrigal. Madrigal, of course, one of the dangerous wingers to watch out for. Now this substitution from Talis Peterson by bringing on Muchiri, is this going to be one of those secret weapon substitutions? And Bonifaci Muchiri has actually been capped before for the national team of Kenya. Well, let's see what he can do for this LA4 squad. A free kick first. Just inside, just near midfield. And this one sent deep, parried, not out just yet. Muchiri had it for a moment. He was trying to get it to Guzman, but now Muchiri trying to get it back. Pretty sure the referee would not blow the whistle there. But that ball that was sent in was parried by Barrera. Was a little bit dangerous for the Cal United defenders. But now a free kick for Cal United. That's, this is going to be interesting. We have a little under 20 minutes remaining in this game. And it's still 2-1 Cal United strikers leading LA Force. And back, back with that shot for for LA LA Force, you saw that uh, Barrera was trying to come up with it. And now Villalobos playing it outside to Nuno. Nuno had it for a moment, unable to get past James Alawine, who just came on as a sub for Giovanni Vasquez. And what a turn that is from Enrique Cardenas, trying to get it towards Merlano. I actually think he was trying to get instead to Ricardo Ruiz, but that pass was deflected. You could see the look of frustration on the face of Ricardo Ruiz. They badly need this game. Anything, anything I would even say, you know, anything less than a victory, I think for the force, they gotta look at this as a disappointing result because they need those three points. That's... Here's the thing, Art. If you're the force and you lose this game, do you see this as a bad season? Hard to say if you see it as a bad season. I mean, I think the word bad might be a little bit, uh, might, be, might be a little harsh but you could use words like disappointing. But now the other way here is Muchiri. I like the speed he has coming off the bench. You like the thing, just maybe a couple more touches could be, you know, sh blasting a shot from long distance to test Barrera. Now Villalobos had it for a moment, but not back the other way. It's Cardenas, faking the cross. He's got Coronado on him. He's gotta get it to someone else soon. Running out of options, gets it to Ruiz instead. Now Guzman to Dos Anjos. And that was Muchiri playing it to the outside. The cross from Daniel Amo did take a deflection and it will be a corner kick for the LA Force. And we are seeing a substitution now for Cal United. Number 12. And looks like it's going to be Miguel Sanchez Rincon coming on for Michael Bryant. Michael Bryant with the 
Of course, waiting for the corner kick. LA Force badly needing another equalizer. When they played in Irvine, the Force were shut out and even missed a penalty. This time they did tonight, they have scored, but they find themselves down 2 1. And here comes the corner, a short one with a flick header. Knocked out by Barrera, sent back in towards the net, and it's a goal! Wow, what a goal that was! Steven Barrera came out. You want to say maybe he came out to no man's land, and Leo Dos Anjos heading that ball into the net. It was unable to be cleared, and it is 2 2 in the 74th minute of play. Art. This LA Force team does not give up in this one. They know what's at stake in this one. They do not give up on this one. It's not over yet. Take a look at that replay. Corner kick, that one deflected off, a header. Barrera trying to get that one off. There's the header there. Dos Anjos able to get it inside of the net. And just like that, now we have ourselves another new game. But like I, I keep saying, guys, this is as interesting as it's going to get. Gotta love this way, gotta love the way this one is turning out. Now we have about a little bit over 15 minutes remaining plus stoppage time. And you know, when, you, when we saw that replay, after that goal was scored, we saw a lot of frustration from Steven Barrera and he knows he made a mistake when he came out. And now for a moment we saw maybe an, a, an attack an attempt for the force, but now it actually gets Cal United. Can Omar Nuno turn the corner? Instead, a good defensive play from Colwell, and it will be a corner kick for Cal United. Wow, this game from here on out, I mean, just nonstop action. These fans here are definitely enjoying some Nisa soccer, and so are we. This game has been potentially one of the best games of the season so far are I mean this has just been a back and forth affair it's just been a game of anything you could do I could do better so it's just been a fun game between these two teams we'll wait and see with this corner kick pending and with Gonzalo Salguero to take this corner been dangerous with the left foot all night here it comes and that one headed high into the air it's not cleared out yet and Mark Tanko trying to clear it, but looks like it was Salguero called for the foul. And of course, definitely good news for the force, just tying the game up 2-2. And when you look at both goals from the force coming from set pieces, at the end of the first half, that free kick, and this time off the corner kick. And like I said, going back to the reaction of Barrera, after that goal, he just got that ball, you know, his reaction the reaction from Barrera, from Barrera said it all. He was frustrated, angry, you know, these things happen. He's obviously got to shake that off. But heads up play, no pun intended, right, from Leo Dos Anjos. And that's how we are tied up 2-2. Now the flick header from Muchiri. Now an opportunity for the LA Force. Guzman. Getting it to Merlano. Now the cross from Amo. Now Muchiri playing it to the outside. The cross in front. Merlano getting his head on it. But what a great defensive play to force the corner kick. And it looks like that was Fuerte who was able to get his head on it after Merlano had got a touch on it. So close to being 3-2 for the force. And now a corner kick. Looks like it will be one of the second half subs. Bonifaci Muchiri to take it. And here it comes. Headed out, but going straight to Ricardo Ruiz. He tees off. That one going just a bit high and wide, but you gotta like the attempt. And now another substitution <laughs> for the LA Force. And this time it's gonna be Daluzma coming on for Manny Guzman. And that's Ruby De Luzma coming on, who actually played his college soccer at the University of Texas at Rio Grande Valley. That's a, uh, that's a uh, Western Atlantic Conference team right there, Division I University at its finest. Like we said, plenty of depth and talent from this LA4 squad. 
And now with the game being 2-2, you have to just be assuming that the that the tide has been stemmed a bit by the LA Force, but we know the Cal United Strikers will keep on pushing forward to find that game-winning goal. We are now in the 79th minute of play. The score is 2-2, LA Force and Cal United FC. What a game, what a night this has turned out to be. A perfect night for soccer. And Chris Cludie sending that one towards Omar Nuno, but going straight to Miguel Marin. You know what, Ari, you were talking about how much talent LA Force has. I just actually have to compliment the league and say that there's just uh, just so much talent in the NISA. There's just, every team just seems to have their group of players that are so talented. They hard workers, hustle, uh, hustlers, they're gamers day in, day out. Every game you just see these players just putting in the hustle, putting in just the hours in practice and just coming onto the pitch and you can tell who are who are these players that are just dedicated to to playing these games and you know what each game has really been a grind for each one of these teams for both in the western and in the eastern conferences and now a throw in for la force deep in cal united territory and i don't feel like going towards the standings right now because i think we should just be focusing on the action we have here now throw in like we said deep in cal united territory the cross is that going to be trouble for Barrera? Actually, it seemed like it was just a bit, but it did go out of bounds for a goal kick. And Barrera, obviously aware of where he needs to be and where the ball is going, but for a moment, that I think that might have caused a little bit of a um, little bit of an, caused a few nerves to go up a bit for the Cal United players. Right now, if you're LA Force, you're hot right now. Every possession has been looking very well. If you're Cal United, you need to get, you need to step things up. You need to go to the very next gear and make something happen. And now Villon with an excellent ball. Looks like he was able to tightrope it and keep it in bounds, but the flag did come up. The ball must have gone over the touchline, and it's a throw in for the LA Force. And I think you had the Cal United bench just furious with that call. And what an opportunity that would have been, especially with Vion, plenty of speed, so tough to cover, so tough to mark. With the ball back in play, Cludi heading that one out for a moment. Now Enrique Cardenas, it's like we're seeing him playing at the defensive midfield role with Leo Dos Anjos. Now that one given away, going straight to Salguero. Now Capriati, Capriati, excellent patience. He heard the footsteps from Ricardo Ruiz. Now sending the ball up the field, looking for Omar Nuno. But actually it looks like Nuno might have been a might have been a foul. Either way, referee did not blow the whistle. Ball goes all the way to Miguel Marin. We are in the 82nd minute of the match. It's 2-2, LA Force and Cal United Strikers. In the second half, goals for the second half, Villalobos gave Cal United the lead, but just a few minutes ago, it was Leo Dos Anjos tying it up with a header off a corner kick. And what a goal that was. It's one of those plays where it's kind of like you could say some unlucky bounces or some unfortunate events for Cal United, but either way, it's 2-2 and that's, that's where we are right now. And this game has just been absolutely fun from minute one to all the way to minute number 82. And you know what? We still have eight plus minutes coming up. And now maybe a chance. Muchiri almost had it. Was not able to keep control in the penalty area. But we are seeing the LA Force providing the pressure with that sense of urgency. And the ball going out of bounds. It is a throw in for Cal United. And of course, much to the chagrin of the LA Force players and fans. Look at the, let's take a look at that replay right there. Tough one. Definitely was a tough one. The long throw in from Cludie. And the header from Dos Anjos. Now Amo to Cardenas. Cleared away. Colwell, plenty of time. And that's a good ball. He's trying to get towards Ruiz. But now given away. And looks like there was a foul, but no. Referee says play on. A good ball from Muchiri. 
And now the whistle blows, and Bonifaci Muchiri was on the end of that foul. He's on the ground, but you gotta light the play from the midfielder, from the Canyon midfielder. Plenty of energy. You gotta like the touches he has as well. Now a free kick for the force. This definitely could be that opportunity to get that go-ahead goal. And what a moment it would be if they are if they are able to take the lead this late in the match. You know what? This free kick is actually pretty close into the neighborhood right about now. So we'll see how Barrera welcomes the LA Force offense here into the neighborhood. Maybe it's maybe not a very nice homecoming, but we'll wait and see what happens. Well, it's gonna be Muchiri. Or Dos Anjos, are they going to want to put this one on net to test Barrera? And here it comes, the shot taking a couple bounces. Looks like it, the clearance did take a deflection. Now Waldrip the other way, getting it to Villalobos. Villalobos trying to get it back towards Waldrip. But Muchiri with a great touch, getting it to his left back, Daniel Amo. And now nearly given away, nice back heel from Dos Anjos, and that was Daluzma who had it for a moment. So both teams making their fair share of second half substitutions. Now the long ball looking for Merlano. Now Muchiri trying to take possession. Now can Merlano take it? Merlano had it for a moment, looks like he was fouled, and yes, it will be another free kick for the LA Force in a very dangerous position. I think we're seeing the Cal United Strikers players you know, definitely realizing that this is becoming a very, a very tough match and that you never know how this one's going to end. They're very suspenseful. Got to be careful with the fouls that you're committing there. This is another one. Looks like Cal United is inviting the LA Force back to their neighborhood here. Maybe for dinner, maybe breakfast. I think it's more like for dinner right about now. The sun has already set it here inside a Rio Hondo Stadium, but uh, we'll wait and see what happens. And here comes the free kick. Looks like it's going to be Deluzma. Not putting it on net, but instead, it, but actually did go out of bounds off the head of Chris Clutie. Now will be a corner kick. We are in the 86th minute of the match. Looks like Ricardo Ruiz will be taking this corner. Now one of the center backs, we've seen both center backs, James Allawine, also pushing into the penalty area on this corner kick. Here it comes, the left-footed corner from Ruiz. A little bit too much. Going right to Miguel Sanchez Rincon. And Miguel doing a good job. Miguel Sanchez Rincon doing a good job shielding the ball out of bounds. Goal kick for Cal United strikers. Barrera not wasting any time. Plays it quickly to Miguel Sanchez Rincon. And the long clearance looking for Nuno. Now Amo had trouble with it for a moment. Now Deluzma doing a good job getting it to Mark Tanko. Still Tanko. And plenty of space in the midfield. And that was Merlano who had it for a moment. Now Cardenas. And both and looks like you had Merlano asking for a whistle, but did not, but no whistle from the ref. I think the referee has done a good job being consistent for the most part tonight. Ball did go out of bounds. Last touched by Villalobos. Now Muchiri, a great turn. Still has it. Almost lost it to Waldrip. Now that was Amo, he got it to Muchiri for a moment. And I like the touches from Bonifaci Muchiri. At times he does lose the ball, but you definitely like the energy he's brought off the bench. Now Vion fouled from behind. That will be a free kick for Cal United. You really have to appreciate how LA Force is playing right now. They're playing some pretty, pretty gray soccer right about now. They've put up some very good offensive possessions. You know what? Cal United has been quiet within these last couple of moments. And now Villalobos trying to change that, sending that cross into the penalty area, but going straight to Miguel Marin. Marin not in a hurry yet. He felt the pressure, didn't want to make a mistake by having it deflect off of Miguel Sanchez Rincon. Now cleared to the other side of the field. And looks like Merlano was asking for a foul, and he's actually had a quiet night tonight. But I can't be surprised about that. It's not a pretty sure we all know the Cal United coaching staff did their homework. Now back the other way, Vion had it for a moment but did not get that first touch that he would have wanted. But it does go out of bounds, will be a throw in for Cal United. And you have to wonder, are we gonna see any more substitutions in these last few minutes? 
Now Waldrip playing it to the outside. And that was Nuno with a quick touch. Can Waldrip get possession? He does. Now it's Vion. And Vion surrounded by Colwell and Madri surrounded by Colwell. And Aluzma. And looks like it actually goes out of bounds. And it pretty sure it's going to be a corner kick for Cal United. And we are in the 89th minute of the match. Any kind of free kick or corner kick from here on out. You know, you just know a lot of nerves would be very, very nerve-wracking for either team. And here comes the corner kick. Salaguero plays it short. Goes out of bounds. Not too much on that. Not too much coming from that corner as it goes out of bounds for a Cal United throw-in. You would think this late in the game that that ball would, would have been sent into the, would have been whipped into the LA Force penalty area. And now, off that attempted clearance, instead, now it goes out for another Cal United corner kick. We are in the 90th minute of, the, of play. You have to assume there will be maybe at least three or four minutes of stoppage time. Now, off the short corner, didn't really turn into much. For Cal United, the attempted clearance intercepted. Villalobos, looks like we hear his name constantly. Now Chris Cludy lost that one to Muchiri. Now Ricardo Ruiz to Marvin Merlano. Still Merlano trying to cross it. He does, but puts a little bit too much on it. Goes out of bounds for a goal kick. And you could just feel the reaction from the LA Force fans. You know that that sigh where they just, oh, it was so close. That really was, that really might have been the, the best opportunity. That was the best look of the day right there for LA Force. Again, Chris Cludy actually coming in clutch for Cal United, putting on the pressure, making it difficult for them to get at the attack there. And it looks like we're seeing on the other side of the field, yes, there will be three minutes of stoppage time. But you know, earlier before this game, when we heard from what we, you know, from our conversations with the Cal United sideline, I mean, a win or a tie will put Cal United Strikers FC into the West Coast Championship of this NISA showcase. So I don't think, it obviously, I think in a few minutes, if this, if this is how the result stands, I don't think they can find themselves being disappointed, but we know there could be a little bit of disappointment for the fact that they just want to win. And the flag coming up for offside will be a free kick for Cal United. Perfectly said, Our, I was actually just about to say, it's like you mind read me right now and you just took what I was about to say. But My bad on no that. Ahead. But you know, Cal United, they'd much rather have a win here, especially against an opponent like LA Force. But you know what, LA Force putting up a great game today, not disappointing anybody. For those of you turn, tuning in online, whether it's through the Cal United website, TV Emacs, MyKuju, wherever you guys are tuning in, this game did not disappoint any of us here, especially here, here in Rio Hondo College. We got ourselves a ball game. The top two teams in the Western Conference had a ball game tonight, and wow, it was fun to take in. So there's still time for LA Force to potentially turn this game completely upside down and completely shock all of the Cal United fans along with the Cal United team itself. And Aiden Coronado being attended to, I feel like we might see another substitution from Cal United. But like we saw, like we said, like we heard earlier, there's three minutes of stoppage time, but now with this injury, of course, we know there will be a couple more minutes played. And yes, looks like we are ready to see another substitution from Cal United. From here, we're just gonna have to wait and see who the, who the player will be that will be coming on. And it does look to, and of course from here, Aiden Coronado definitely does not look like he's enjoying himself. I think I wouldn't, of course, like to say it's pretty obvious that he should be the one coming off. He's actually gonna need help getting off of the pitch so we'll wait and see we'll wait and see who's going to be coming off of the bench to come off to come on to the pitch hopefully hopefully everything is okay with uh, coronado getting and, off of the pitch and coronado's night is done as he is replaced by alberto navarro and navarro plenty of experience with teams like the atlanta silverbacks colorado rapids even the oc blues so another experienced player on the pitch now we're ready to get this one back into action off the free kick. That one 
Getting to Omar Nuno. Still Nuno. Had it at the corner. It did go out of bounds, but he was not able to force a corner kicker for Cal United. Instead, a throw in for the LA Force deep in their own territory. And looks like it's gonna be Daniel Amo taking this throw in. Gets to Mochiri and Amo just gripping it high into the air. Headed away by Fuerte. Now Dos, now Dos Anjos keeping possession, playing it to the other side of the field. Can the force find another goal scoring opportunity? Off that pass, we did see one of the players tumble, but definitely was not a foul. Throw in, taken quickly by Colwell. And now this ball from Colwell sent in deep into Cal United territory. And we see Merlano fall to the ground. And you have the LA Force fans asking for a whistle. And we're looking at the replay. I mean, you still like to think that it'd be hard, that it'd be very difficult to call a penalty in that situation. Either way, the whistle was not blown. We have played four minutes of stoppage time, but there was that injury to Aiden Coronado that of course has added, I would say, probably another another two or three minutes. There was also that substitution when Navarro came on, but that is the final whistle and the final score. Los Angeles Force 2, Cal United Strikers FC 2. What an exciting match we had tonight. And now, Alex, you just wonder you know, you just wish this game could be settled, but both teams end up sharing the spoils in a 2-2 draw. You know, this was this was the best game that you guys could have tuned into today. This was a great soccer game put together. We saw a share of a penalty kick being made, some excellent goals being made, and mistakes made here and there by both teams. But you know what? This was top-notch soccer, and soccer at its finest here tonight. For those of you that were here in attendance for the game, you guys experienced a great one. For those of you that even experienced it online, you guys experienced a great one. We highly encourage you guys to come on to the pitch and participate or even just come through and watch the the Western Conference uh, championship game wherever it's located. We highly encourage you guys to, to watch that. You guys just saw some great soccer tonight. Why not experience that live and why not see it, see it in a championship game? So like so why not attend and watch it live? We just saw some top-notch soccer here tonight. Why not watch it live? Absolutely. I mean, plenty of action, four goals, two from each team. You really got to like what we it was really exciting, what we saw tonight. And to recap how this night went, like we said in the first half, Christian Tyrion was fouled in the penalty area and stepped up to convert from the penalty spot himself to get his sixth goal of the season. That's how Cal United took a 1-0 lead. And then with time winding down, it looked everyone felt it was going to be a 1-0 lead for Cal United going into the half, but that free kick and then the header from Vasquez and then finished off by Colwell. That tied up the score 1-1 late at the very dying moments of the first half. And then the second half, of course, let's not forget Gustavo Villalobos with that left-footed laser that got past Miguel Marin to make it 2-1. I'm sure that at that moment, the Cal United fans probably were thinking, okay, there's the winner. But then late in the match, with time winding down, a corner kick, and it was Barrera who had some trouble with it. He, you know, he came out to no man's land, and it was Leo Dos Anjos, the midfielder from Brazil, heading the ball in, and that's how he finished, tied up 2-2. And that is it for us. What an exciting match this was. The final score wins again, Los Angeles Force 2, Cal United Strikers FC 2. I am Artif Dakari, and I was joined by Alex Nabeja. Proud to have been bringing you tonight's call for this Nisa soccer match between the LA Force and Cal United Strikers FC. Once again, the final score 2 2. Los Angeles Force and Cal United Strikers. This game was brought to you on uh, Mike Cujo via TVE Max.